Hello and welcome to A Homespun House. My name is Molly and I want to thank you so much for taking some time to listen to my chatter about knitting, hand dyeing yarn, um, things that my family and I get up to um, each week, each month, whenever we get the chance to talk. Uh, I dye yarn for A Homespun House, which is my company. If you want to learn about that story, you can go back and watch the first episode of A Homespun House video podcast. I have my parents here in Germany right now, which is where I live. And um, they live in America, but they're here for a little over a two week visit, which is really, really fantastic. We're very happy to have them. <clears throat> They've been here for a while now, and uh, in a bit, my mom will actually be coming on the podcast. Um, so you guys will get a chance to meet her if you haven't already. She has been in some uh, backlogs, but um, my mom, I've mentioned here and there uh, on my Instagram stories in particular, and maybe through a few Instagram photos as well as I believe a few podcasts, just how we use oils in our everyday life um, to help us get better, to um, help keep us healthy, um, for all around mental and body balance and wellness and um, my mom is going to talk with us a little bit later about that so I'm really really looking forward to that so stay tuned for the end of the episode for a little bit about that if you're interested so I have been doing a bit of knitting seeing as though I have guests I don't do a lot of knitting but um, I think that's pretty normal when you're spending time with people that you're not just sitting around all the time and knitting. <laughs> so um, I'm going to show you the, the socks that I'm working on for Robert and that is out of a homespun house yarn in our uh, cashmere base which is an 80, 70% superwash merino, 20% non superwash cashmere and 10% nylon. And this is a homespun house's Collins colorway, this really beautiful um, natural speckled uh, colorway and then the dark color for the toes and heel is ash these are a gift for Robert I've decided since the last podcast that these will definitely be for st. Nicholas day which is in the beginning of December when st. Nicholas comes and um, visits us checks to make sure our boots or shoes are clean and gives us some gifts in the morning it's not too far away to be honest so that is a little bit crazy i am working on the second sock i have so far my leg finished i have since we last spoke um, knit the heel i did the fish lips kiss heel on both socks i didn't mention that already and now i'm just knitting around until i get to the toe um, this is a 72 stitch sock on two millimeter needle, so a size US zero needle. And um, Robert wears a size 46 or 47. I don't know what that is in, in American size, but he has pretty large feet. So he, he definitely will use the whole 100 gram skein. And I'm hoping that just doing the black or the it's quite a tonal black gray. Um, I hope that I will have enough of the um, Collins colorway, but I'm, I'm almost positive that, that I will have enough. It, it feels like it for sure. So I hope he loves these. I hope that I've made the foot the correct size. I've made the foot a little bit smaller than past socks that I've made him because if you knit socks, you will definitely know that they just stretch out a little bit, especially being super wash. So uh, when they seem like they'll fit perfectly when you make them, they always kind of stretch out a little bit, which is why I like a bit of negative ease on my socks that I knit personally for myself. Um, when knitting socks for Robert, I think I've maybe knit him, I don't know, six pair. It's, it's totally a learning experience for someone who you don't you haven't knit that many of that item for. Some people might think six is a lot, but when it really comes to a perfectly custom fit piece, because I'm not measuring and constantly checking gauge, which probably would give me a perfect fit, 
That's why this is happening. <laughs> so I'm enjoying these. I love knitting with our Merino cashmere base. It's I, like I've mentioned, I've never felt this base from another yarn dyer, and I really, really like it. It's a really nice twist. It's so really, really spongy. It has a really, really nice feel to the sock, to the yarn. I will be using that yarn, actually, to knit my featherweight. So I am knitting... I'm going to grab it over here because I already have two skeins wound up in the ash colorway um, so that I can immediately cast on my featherweight as soon as I finish my Penguono by Stephen West. I think this is just a perfect knit where you don't really have to think much. I've knit two featherweights before. I wear the one that I knit out of Volan Vine Yarns in Kristen's Fairy Hair colorway, which I adore. I have a skein of that just waiting around to be knit. I have quite a bit of, of Volan Vine Yarns just waiting to be knit. It's just finding that perfect project to, to knit with it. But I wear that one all the time. And then I have another one that I knit out of Query Fiber Arts and then the Wool Barn. I knitted out of those two colorways, but I knit the sleeves so long that I never wear it. I tried the cardigan on, the featherweight, the one that's a little bit oversized on the arms. I tried it on, I think last weekend when we had guests over. If you've been watching for a while, we had Tina, Michi, and Emma over. And I tried it on and it fits perfect. It is literally just those sleeves. So all I would have to do is rip it back and re-knit a cuff. It could not be more simple than that. So I'm thinking that will have to happen sometime sometime soon. I just feel like I want to knit so many things right now that my place isn't, my mind isn't in the place to rip that cardigan out. It won't happen until I want to do it and I want to be there. So I'm enjoying knitting what, what I'm knitting right now. And when I come to a place where I want to rip things out, then I will do that. But I feel like I want to cast on so many things. I'm just restraining from that because I don't have a lot of time at the moment. I, I want to finish the things that I'm that I'm currently working on. Uh, so here is my pinguono. I I love this thing so much. It is knit out of purely a homespun house yarns, which, as a dyer, I'm sure all of you dyers can imagine. It's very, 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 very. I could go on with fairies forever. Special. So, you don't see a needle around it, do you? <clears throat> it's not finished, don't get too excited. I still have a little bit left to do, but not much at all. I uh, can, can finish this pretty quickly, but given the fact that my parents are here, um, I can't just sit down in a day and knit on it. Um, but I'll show you what I have to do. First, I'll show you what I've done. So this is the back, and this big panel is Snack Attack. I have not had this in the shop forever. It was a colorway that I dyed one time. I haven't dyed it since. However, come November, I will be having some snack attack. Can I see it? Snack attack in the shop. I can't wait. So I have that big panel of snack attack in the back. Then I have these welts. Um, one has just a little pop of neon. I am not the hugest fan of neon. I don't need it everywhere. Um, I don't need it almost anywhere, to be honest. But I just thought that this garment, because it's so special, could really use one or two little pops of neon. So I have a pop there and then I have a pop in the front. So this is the back. Let's see. As you would see it. I have not blocked this yet. It's not finished, as I mentioned. And then this is the front. I'm not sure how well this is showing. Um, I used the Pygmy Puff colorway as the entire border. I extended it. It's definitely longer than, um, it's at least twice the size of what the pattern calls for. But I want this to be quite a big cozy uh, cardigan. I think it's kind of more like a jacket now that I've uh, finished most of it just because it's so warm. I could wear this outside on 
probably a 50 degree day, which is about, you know, a 12 degree day outside Celsius. And I was going to say be warm, but who am I kidding? I'm cold all the time. So I could wear this inside if it's like 18, 19 degrees, 20 degrees inside of the house where there's no sun or, um, and it would keep me warm. And I have been wearing it even though the sleeves aren't finished. So <clears throat> according to pattern, I've knit this out of order, but that's okay. Um, I have to finish this, this sleeve pick up here. You can see there's just a little, um, just a gap here where I have to knit a panel for the sleeve and then I have to do the I-cord bind off. I haven't decided what color I'm going to do for the I-cord bind off around the sleeves. I changed my mind from my original decision. I was going to use electric feel to do the I-cord bind off on the entire piece, which is this bright, bright neon yellow colorway. But then I thought, I don't want it to be, I, I, I don't want that. It just, it felt like it wasn't the right choice. So I tried a few different colorways. I tried um, a really, really light, creamy tweed. Uh, I thought that might be nice that the tweed might add some really beautiful textures into the piece. It might add some really nice textures. And then I, um, but, but it was too gray. The tweed yarn has too much of a gray base that I don't really have any gray toned yarns in here that I just didn't like the effect that it had. Um, so I ended up going with, if you're a bird, I'm a bird which I have knit into the coat right here. But I think that it looks, it goes really, really nicely. Um, I have to seam this, this edge of the bind off. Um, I do have some ends to weave in. I don't really have many ends to weave in at all in my coat. As I knit, I picked up, I mean, I haven't woven any ends in and you can see how many different colorways I have. And this is all of the ends that there are. I mean, you can't really see many. So as I knit, I wove them in and um, I, I knit them in. I didn't weave them in. I knit them in as I knit the garment. And there are no pieces that are feel bulkier than others. It's, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I've done, I did that with the Marled Magic when I was knitting it because I chose not to do the braided piece. I, I wouldn't do it with most things, to be honest. Uh, but in this case where it's so, I spoke about this last time, scrappy, um, or just, there's so many different textures to this. There are different, I mean, it's all the same overall weight of yarn, but I feel like when, when you're adding so many different colors, so many different, you know, garter stitch, seed stitch, uh, there's a couple of, you know, the stockinette pleats in there, you don't pick up on it. You don't notice it at all. You don't feel it. And it made the, it made me enjoy knitting this so much more. So all that needs to be done are those little um, panels underneath of the armpit and then just I-cord bind off around each sleeve. And then ends need to be woven in. If at all, I don't have to weave the ends and I'm wearing it. Um, they might add some warmth. <laughs> Not at all, I'm not, I'm not that silly to think that, but um, it's beautiful. So I think I used three, six, nine, twelve, somewhere between 18 and 20 different colorways. So uh, I feel like as a hand dyer, the world is your oyster. There are so many different colorways that you can use, unless you have a m pretty massive stash of yarns that you think would look nice or go nice together. Um, I couldn't recommend this anymore for, for hand dyers, just people in general, but for hand dyers, it's so nice because you really, really get to know some of your colors, some of your favorite colors. Um, and I've, I've had just the most pleasure knitting on this. It's a lot of fun. And I know that it will be a piece that I wear all the time. Uh, I was knitting on it yesterday doing the I-cord bind off and uh, we were watching Rain Man, which believe it or not, I've never seen before. 
and I was working on the I-cord bind off, which I finished up this morning when the girls and I woke up. Adri D and I did some knitting and Ruby, Ruby played um, with the pieces from a Lotti Kohati game. Um, I'm sure you Germans will know this game. And the next thing that I've been working a little bit on is the shawl that I'm knitting for my sister. I'm knitting this again with ash. This is that deep, dark, beautiful tonal gray, dark black colorway, and I'm knitting it with Puddle Jumper. And this is our Merino Cashmere base, and this is Plump Merino, which is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. So I have this in my Busy Bird Maker Maker bag, which again was a gift from um, the maker of these bags, the Busy Bird. Um, company she sells through Etsy and I love this bag. I think it's very very simplistic. Uh, the fabric isn't too crazy. I love that it says maker because I am a maker of things. It has a linen fabric. I imagine this is linen. It looks quite similar but a cotton linen mix I'm guessing and it's a nice size. The strings move through it beautifully and um, I adore using it. So, oh, I didn't even show you what I was, I thought I was finished with this. So I am using, what kind of needles am I using? I'm using Chiagu needles and uh, I got these in a swap that I did through uh, Verena Koz, who is the, the wool club. She did a local swap and um, I got those through a swap. So this is how much I've done of the road trip shawl by Kemper Way. I'm just Kemper Ray. I'm just slowly working on this and picking it up as I please. I wanted to have this done by the time my parents left, but there's no way. I'm really getting a feel of how much knitting I'm getting done while they've been here. And I want to finish my Panguono because I need it to wear it when it's really cold. Because as I've mentioned, I am cold all the time. This wasn't the case when I was little. As I've gotten older, I just have cold fingers and feet quite a lot. Um, when I was little, I was always so hot and sweaty. <laughs> but, but yeah, so I'm loving knitting on this. I can't wait to start knitting on Puddle Jumper. Um, that's a colorway that I've never ever knit with. So I was very happy when my sister said that she loved this color because it is beautiful. I think that it will make a really, really lovely shawl. So this is the second time I've knit the Road Trip Shawl by Kemper Ray, and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. It's another really easy, mindless piece, and um, it's just kind of like the socks, a really, really easy one to pick up here and there. Whereas now that I'm at the sleeves, I will, I will definitely have to do that sometime when uh, the girls will be asleep for sure, and maybe we'll watch a movie or something in the evening. The final thing that I'm working on is I've, I've picked up my granny stripe blanket and I've done a couple rows on that. It's really nice now that it's getting colder, as I said, because I am always very cold, but I haven't worked on this in a long time. And it's something that, you know, I've been thinking about on and off. I'm going to put my, my pink one away. I've been thinking about it on and off because I love it. I love this project. Um, I go in phases of becoming obsessed with it. And I think in the summer, I don't think I knit on it at all. But, and I don't even have much of this done. I need to knit, I need to crochet what's on here times probably five. But it's so beautiful. Um, this is all out of indie dyed yarn. And I just love it. I wanted to show you guys this again because it's been quite a long time since I showed it to you. And, um, oh, there are so many pieces of this that just make me so happy. It's so pretty. But, yeah, I love working on it. I, I really like the Selena in there. It's the same with my Panguono. I've been slowly just adding little pieces here and there of pretty Selena as a just nice little touch. But this blanket is going to be very, very warm. 
Um, I, I have two cakes to work off of, which is really nice so that when I finish one, I can very easily go to the next one. I have this small one, and then I have this larger one that I made quite some time ago. So um, I can't wait. A lot of this is Maker's Haven yarn, and this as well. So. So while my parents have been here, um, we have been preparing advent calendars. Those will be shipping out soon in the evenings. Robert and I have been winding the skeins. We're almost done. We have three more colors to wind up until we're finished with all, all of the, the minis that need to be wound up for advent. And then we have to start packaging them up into their pretty little packages, which we've already began. Um, but those should be shipping out in the middle of, of October, probably. They could be shipping out in November, which I think is when I said they would ship out, but any earlier would be fantastic. I would be very, very happy to ship those out before I left for Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck, but no promises, we'll have to see. Um, I want to mention that I will be opening up um, signups for a homespun house and simply serving Harry Potter Yarn and Charm Club. I have fallen head over heels with simply servings charms. I have been doing a few charm club, quite a few, for maybe almost two years with Super Super Miniatures and I'm still doing the monthly clubs with her but I wanted to try out um, simply serving. I wanted to do a yarn club with her because I did a swap with her a while ago and she sent me some charms and I honestly was astounded at the quality of her charms. Her creativity, the way that the charms look, um, while some of them, some of them, not all, are, you know, a good size. They're very, very light. I feel like if you put them low enough in your work, they definitely don't get in the way ideas are already with her and she has made some prototypes and those will be ready to go come January, February and March for the first Harry Potter Yarn and Charm Club with a homespun house and simply serving. I cannot wait. You guys are going to love next year's Yarn and Charm for Harry Potter. It's been nice, but not nice having a break because as I mentioned, I love Harry Potter. I think about Harry Potter. I think of tons of ideas, um, but it's really refreshed my mind and made me think of new fun Harry Potter colorways and names for the yarn and just fun charms in general. So um, I'm very excited. If any of you have tried to shop a homespun house, I'm sure you have noticed or been curious about how because the shop is closed. Uh, there is no yarn in the shop right now while my parents are here. I don't want to do any work. I want to, I mean, we're winding skeins and doing some advent things, but that's kind of something that Robert and I are doing in the living room while we're all hanging out and it's quite a social activity, whereas packaging orders isn't. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there is really nothing for sale, uh, but it will be come November. However, there will always be monthly charm clubs. So um, in October, there will be listings up this month for November's Yarn and Charm Club. Um, so definitely, definitely uh, look forward to that. Those will be available on Monday. So um, I can't wait to share those with you. They are all of this year's Yarn and Charm Clubs with Super Super Miniatures are fantastic. Those of you who subscribe to the October Yarn and Charm Club, I think your minds are going to be blown. <laughs> they're, they're really lovely. So I've had a lot of fun dyeing up yarns. I have hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of skeins of yarn that are going into the shop when a homespun house reopens. I just want to show you some of those. So I am going to share with you um, September's Yarn and Charm Club. This was for my birthday and we have here a birthday cake with a candle. 
well, a little birthday cupcake. It's very, very sweet. Chelsea did an amazing job with the candle. And then here is this skein of yarn. It's our Merino Cashmere Base. So again, it's 70% Superwash Merino, 20% Merino, Cashmere, 10% Nylon. And the colorway is called It's My Party and I'll Cashmere if I want to. All of my clubs are a one of a kind colorway. They will never, ever be dyed again. So um, I don't even write down the dye recipes. If you get a colorway and you love it, there's absolutely no way I can replicate these colorways. I also have Warm and Toasty. This colorway could not be more perfect for fall. Um, I love this one. I think this was a colorway that I introduced last year. There's that snack attack that I showed you. Fog. I have a one-of-a-kind colorway and all of my one-of-a-kind skeins I'm going to be called Whimsy. So this is a skein of Whimsy. They will not have particular names anymore. They will just be a skein of Whimsy. Um, so if you see a skein that's called Whimsy in the shop, they are one-of-a-kind batches that will never, ever, ever be reproduced again. I also have, will be having a lot of, and all of these will be available on multiple bases, that being cashmere, plump merino, soft merino, stellina, tweed, singles, mohair, um, BFL. So I have pumpkin spice, which is a really, really popular tonal. Um, and then I have a few more over here. I didn't grab all of them because I don't think you guys want to sit here for hours and look at shop yarn. Half Blood Prince. I have Jingleberry, which will be fun as the holiday season is rolling around. Electric Feel, which is the one that I talked about that I have in my pullover. I have Barley. This is one of my absolute favorites. B Sides and Rarities. Love that one. And then I have It's Okay to Be Alone. So I am going to now have my mom join us and talk with us a little bit about her oil adventure, her, her journey using essential oils. I've been interested in essential oils for quite a long time, looking into them and researching different brands and products. And there's a lot to choose and it's, it's confusing, I thought at first. I did too. And the prices were confusing because they vary so much. There's can go from five dollars for a, a bottle to twenty-five dollars for the same bottle, not the same bottle, but the same type of the same essential label. oil, right? But mm -hmm. with a different like lavender, or lavender with a different brand. So I, I wondered why? Why are they so different? I had the same questions. Right, everyone does, of mm -hmm. course, because why would you spend twenty-five when you could spend ten? I came across Young Living. I've heard of them for quite a long time, and. I researched more into it after I started using essential oils, which I have used them for a couple of years. Young Living oils are available online. They're not available in a store, and I do sell them. I'm a distributor. I became a distributor because I wanted to try the oils. When you become a distributor, it doesn't mean that you're selling oils. It right. just means that you get kind of a, like a discounted price. Mm -hmm. So it's 24%. Right. And um, it just means that you're you're getting the best quality of oil at a, a discounted price. You Even if you're not going to purchase very many, even if you're only going to purchase a few oils, it just makes the most sense to be a distributor because you get a discount. There's mm -hmm. no strings attached. There's different uh, starter kits that you can start with. That's how I did. I started with a starter kit. They have mm -hmm. starter kits, different kinds. You can go to the website and see. What they are, but I started I'll put a with, link. I'll put a link oh, underneath and you can just click yeah. on it. Thanks. The one I started with had a diffuser and 10 of their most popular essential oils. Most and usable oils, too. Well, very usable, right. And one bonus oil it came along with also. So that was fun to use all of the starter oils. I can and smell them now. <laughs> From opening them up, they smell so good. Right. The peppermint. Oh, I love that one. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot of research on the oil, so I'm happy to help you with any questions and assist you, message me. I'm always available to answer your questions. 
Yeah, that's the nice thing about Young Living is you kind of have like an oil friend there to help you learn about is, you know, is this safe to use on my child? How should I use this on my two-year-old? How should I use this on myself? Can I ingest this oil? How should I do that? Um, when is a good time to use this? How many times can I use this? Um, right. Exactly. Yeah. So a lot of questions mm-hmm. and I don't want you to buy something that you don't want to use. I want you to want to use them and feel comfortable using them. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's no pressure ever. And what I really like about Young Living essential oils is the quality. You know that you're getting a high quality oil. It, it is truly a hundred percent essential oils. The FDA does not regulate essential oils, so what you get in the bottle is not necessarily an essential oil, even though it says 100% therapeutic essential oil. Pure, organic. Right. They can put any pretty words on it they want. Right. It doesn't mean they are. They really only have to be about 5% essential oil. And the way that you manuf- the way that you bottle and process an essential oil is very important in the quality. Your could you're be putting car, ca, uh, chemicals on your right. skin when you think you're using pure oil. Right. Which is why people use pure, pure oil, because they don't want to use those chemicals. True, so. right. You think you're using a good product, mm-hmm. but you really do not know what you have in that bottle. What Young Living does is they are in control of each aspect of their processing. They, they are in control of the, seed, the seeds and planting, the farms. They care for their plants using their own oils. They don't use any chemicals or pesticides. Which is pretty neat. Right, right. If they have a batch of, let's say, lavender that they're not 100% thrilled with where they don't want to sell it, they'll use it as part of their um, spraying on their plants to keep pests away, to keep the plants healthier instead of using pesticides. They do all their own distilling. One of the neat things about Young Living is they only distill once. They right. don't over distill. Right. Which, for example, like with mm-hmm. the easiest example is with tea. You know, if you use the same tea bag over oh, and over, sure. your tea is going to taste pretty weak. And a lot of people who do make essential oils will distill over and over and over, where Young Living just does it once. So that you do have mm-hmm. the strong, most potent. What, what are some of the oils that, mm-hmm. that you use or you think, you know, people could use for their everyday life. There are a lot of different ways to use oils too. Right. You know? Um, I, I have a few here that I really, really use a lot. I love them. I love the lavender. Who doesn't love lavender? It is our most used oil. Right. Lavender is, we call it the Swiss Army knife of essential oils because it's so useful. You can use it for, for relaxation. You can use it for skin health. You can use it for, mm-hmm. if you have a, a minor cut or scrape, Bruising. I bruising and put it on a bruise. I put it on bruises where it's helped take the pain away quickly and take make the bruise heal faster. I burned myself. You know when you burn yourself on a hot stove and you have that little area that just hurts for a while. You put a little dab of lavender essential oil on there and what we call it neat. Neat is when you put it on directly and you don't dilute it with an oil, like an oil meaning like coconut oil or jojoba oil or whatever your choice of oil is for using on your skin. A lot of oils you do need to dilute though. There are only right. a few oils that you can use purely on their own, especially with Young Living because it is the real thing. Like that is the real pure oil. Right, each bottle is 100% essential oil. They also have third party testing mm-hmm. where it's tested by a third party to make sure that the quality is is mm-hmm. the highest standard. What what that means is like a third party testing is somebody outside of Young Living. So somebody who they know have nothing to do with but a pure probably scientific lab mm-hmm. who is testing that oil to make sure that what they're saying is true. That this really is oil. It's not 5%. It's not 80%. It is a 100% oil that, that they're selling to you. Which is almost unheard of in most oil <laughs> companies. And there, there's three ways that you use essential oils. You can use them just by inhalation, just smelling it. Mm-hmm. That helps. It goes into your body and very helpful for your mind and relaxation. You can also diffuse it. You can put it in a diffuser. And that's where the essence goes into the air and 
there is an application on your skin using a carrier oil, like a, a coconut oil or a jojoba oil, or whatever your oil of choice is. Mm -hmm. That way. This is one I was saying that we use all the time. You do as well for sleeping. Um, um, most every night. Yeah, we have mm -hmm. in our house in particular. We have a diffuser in the living room, dining room, kitchen. Too. We have a huge open concept. Yeah, you guys mm -hmm. do too. I have one in my studio, and then I have one in the bedroom. So when the girls go to bed, when we always read stories or sing songs, when they're getting ready, I diffuse lavender immediately when we get into the room to help calm them down, to help get them sleepy and relaxed, and it definitely works. Robert also says that he feels a big difference when he, since we've had the diffuser, when he goes into the bedroom and just smells the lavender and it helps to calm and wind him down and... The girls love mm -hmm. the smell of it. I would say Eight OD's two favorite scents mm -hmm. are um, the lemon mm -hmm. and the lavender. And the lemon is nice because I love the smell of lemon. I just love the smell. It's lemon. clean. If you diffuse it before, mm -hmm. you have people coming into your house. It just gives it this nice, clean smell of a freshly cleaned home. You know, mm -hmm. it it just smells really good and invigorating. I like to combine rosemary with the lavender. And cedarwood. These are a nice, a nice trio together. I put this on my scalp every day. It's good for your, to support your skin health and your scalp. Many people find it supports their hair growth. That, that is what I use it for. I have really fine hair, and I want my hair and scalp to be healthy. So men, this would be good for men who are losing their hair. Or men too. I or made, women who have thinning hair. Men who have right. thinning hair. I made a, a spray bottle for my husband. Of that. Yes. Does he use it? And Does he, he uses, use it? Mm -hmm. oh, he uses mm -hmm. that in the morning and at night. And he's noticed little hairs coming up, didn't you say? <laughs> yeah. That's right. it. It's a cool thing. Uh huh. It's right. not embarrassing. It's, no, it's I not mean, how crazy is that? I mean, it's not crazy, mm -hmm. but. Essential you know, oils have been around since the beginning of time. They're not something new and trendy. They've been the medicine of choice since, like I said, the beginning of time. They were found in King Tut's tomb bottles of essential oils. Um, and they're, they're, they're still good. They don't, they don't go bad. Essential oils don't. Well, frankincense, for example, they would use to embalm, for embalming. That's what they used to use for, for that in ancient times. So that's probably one reason why it's so good for your skin because it really is, is good for aging. I use a, a drop of frankincense. I put a little drop in my palm each night. I put it with my face lotion and I put it on my face at nighttime. And that I do it in the morning also. Thieves and lemon are really good for using for cleaning your home. I have gotten rid of my cleaners, my toilet cleaners, my comet type cleaners, because they have a lot of chemicals in. And when you use those type of things, and if something gets on your skin or in the air, it's going into your body. So I use thieves. It depends on what kind of smell what, you're what going for. What is thieves though? That's a pretty, there's a pretty neat, Thieves is not an essential oil. It is a combination of oils put together by Young Living. Right. right? Mm -hmm. For, as for a very specific purpose. Right. It's, it's clove, lemon, cinnamon, eucalyptus, and rosemary. The story behind Thieves is when the plague was going around Europe. The bubonic there, plague. There were a, a group of thieves that would go around and rob, and rob the bodies. And people thought, well, eventually they're going to get the plague and die. But what they had was a, a, a combination of essential oils, similar to these, what's in Thieves, and they would put that on themselves to arm themselves and protect themselves from the plague. And they were very successful. They robbed a lot of people and made a lot of money. And they didn't die. <laughs> they didn't die. With the plague because um, of those. Right. And it smells. Really, um, really nice. Because I personally love clove, and you can definitely smell the it's clove. It's a nice fall or Christmas scent. The, the neat thing about essential oils, like my mom was talking about, is you can distill them. And what that means is you put it in sort of like a... Diffuse. There are, there are a lot of... Yeah, diffuse. Diffuse. Mm -hmm. You diffuse them. You can put it inside of a diffuser. And the neat thing about oils, and thieves in particular, or mm -hmm. t a lot of them are anti... They're antibacterial. They're antimicrobial. In, they're antifungal. Exactly. In thieves in particular, they say like at flu season and around Grippe, as it's called in, in Germany, um, to distill it, it kills all of the bacteria. Diffuse. Am I saying distill? You keep saying distill. Diffuse. <laughs> um, 
It kills all of the airborne bacteria in the air Mm -hmm. within 10 minutes, I think. 99.9%. So Mm -hmm. it's... When you use those plugins that go into your wall, you're really getting a lot of chemicals into your body. Like Glade plug-in or... Those type of things. Candles we don't as need, well. That's, right. that's one thing that I completely got rid of because candles are terrible for you. Which is such a shame. Because they're pretty... <laughs> right. They're, it's nice to have They have burning. all of those chemicals. Mm-hmm. Asthma-causing chemicals, allergy-causing chemicals. Mm-hmm. They're just terrible for you. For us and our children, that was my personal reason why I stopped using them and started diffusing. Right, and thieves, you can put this on the on the bottom of your feet, on the soles of your feet at nighttime, or you can do it anytime. I put it on neat, but oh, for okay. us, a younger person, like a child, you would want to put a little carrier oil on it. Mm-hmm. And it goes, it's, it will be in every cell, of, every cell of your body within 20 minutes. It passes the blood-brain barrier. All oils? All the essential oils, too, yes. Mm-hmm. So thieves and lemon, I this is what I use to clean my house. I I like lemon for the bathroom. It smells really nice. Do you use purely those or do you use the thieves cleaner? I have the thieves cleaner, yes. Mm-hmm. I use that for a lot of surfaces, but I still use these. I have one coming, a thieves cleaner, <laughs> which I'm very excited about. I just take a bucket of hot water. I put a couple drops in the water and, and I clean with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then do you add smells, vinegar? Or? No, I, I, I don't add anything. I just use a drop of each of the oil. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. Yeah, there are, there are so many uses for essential oils. I feel like we could go on for a long mm-hmm. time. But I feel like in this sort of season, now that winter is coming along, the Thieves is amazing. For it is. It smells Just really the good. little reasons that we spoke about. Um, mm-hmm. The peppermint is really nice because peppermint is really great for... Um, reducing fever. You have to be careful, of course, how old your children are, but you can put it under their armpits, probably with older children or along their spine for younger children, but definitely with a carrier oil. Um, and use that with caution. Like we're not saying necessarily to do that, but you have, you should read about it a little bit yourself. I, I like the peppermint also for pain relief. Um, it's good if I have, if I have a, a headache which I get them once in a while. I'll put it on my fingertips and we do what's called a peppermint halo. And you put it just along your hairline, a little on your neck, and you can just feel it going into your into your skin. And it really helps to make your headache, um, it goes away. If you have pain, if you, if you hit yourself, which I do often, I don't mean hit myself, but I mean <laughs> bump into a, a table. Yeah, we, we both <laughs> bruise pretty easily. Yeah. I put a little of peppermint on it, and it takes the pain away right away. Mm-hmm. It's very helpful. It smells good. If I'm feeling like I'm starting to not feel well, which isn't very often, I'll put a little bit of thieves on my feet. I'll be sure to do that. You said you said you do that every day, right, in the winter? The thieves? Yeah. Yes, the thieves, for sure. Do you just put that on your feet, or do you ever put it on your... Generally, just my feet. Mm-hmm. I like to diffuse this. I don't really put it on as a perfume. Mm-hmm. I, I do yeah. have, after every bath, I put essential oils all over. I, I like to do that. I like to put, there's one that comes in the starter kit called Purification that keeps insects away. And I used it all summer long and I did not get insect bites. I would go sit outside. We live by a river where there's lots of insects and they didn't bother me. I, I don't like to use bug spray. I look at the chemicals in it and think, I don't want this on my body. We don't use it on our children at all. Mm-hmm. Bug spray. And I know that we need to because they get bit all the time. So Young, young Living actually has a bug spray, but they, right. mm-hmm. which, which I would be curious to try. I don't know what's all in there, but I would. Mm-hmm. I have purification as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely would be interested in, in trying that. Right, for sure. There's just so many uses. They're, like I said, they've been around since the beginning of time. It's not really anything new and trendy. It's just getting to be more popular in the world. People are realizing that they don't want to use a lot of chemicals on themselves. And I wanted to use the purest, the best product that was available. So I researched many different brands and products. And this is the one that I came up with. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to do your own research. Well, you you have to want to and be interested in it and want to definitely. use them. Mm-hmm. We've already used a couple here. We've <laughs> used a lot here. Yeah, that's true. More than a couple. We diffuse, <laughs> yeah, oils a lot. I diffuse them a lot. I I too. I put thieves on my feet every day. Um, I bathe 
skin oils. Um, I use Himalayan bath salts and then I use a carrier oil. And then I'll put um, kind of whatever I want at that right, time. I'll put, the mood for. yeah, like for the girls, again, the lavender we're coming back to. Um, it's very good for sensitive skin. Yeah, it's yeah. good for relaxing. Mm -hmm. I took a bath. What did this you morning and use lavender, cedar, wood, and rosemary. Mm -hmm. Very Another nice really set. cool um, thing that, that you can do mm -hmm. is um, wear is something called a diffuser bracelet. My mom made this one for mm -hmm. me. Personalized this one for yes. me. It says, I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. And then it has a little Hogwarts crest. And in here are, did you want to talk about it a little bit? Well, because we know that Molly loves Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was why we got the, I got those two bees. These are lava beads, so they're very porous. And you put just a little oil on each lava bead, and then you, you smell them throughout the day. Yeah, I feel like um, diffuser bracelets mm -hmm. are kind of more for like a mood change. Would you say that? Like just kind of uplifting. Right, uplifting. Is, you can also get a, dif a diffuser necklace. I have a diffuser necklace. It's at home. Just not. <laughs> But yeah, I've, I've worn this every day since she's given it to me. I've put a different oil in it um, each day. However, today I have the same one that I had in yesterday because it was a little bit more potent. Um, but it's really, really nice. Um, my mom's going to send two for the girls, which I'll probably fill with mm -hmm. lavender or chamomile or thieves. Maybe a drop, drop of lemon on Elodie's. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I love these. I think they're really pretty pieces of jewelry. Um, my mom is being so kind that she is going to do a really fun and special, two really fun and mm -hmm. special giveaways. Um, did you want to talk about these two things? And then we're going to collaborate on them. So mm -hmm. um, you're going to have to go to our Instagrams to be able to enter on these. But these are amazing, I feel like really special giveaways that you don't want to miss. So, mm -hmm. Well, there's the lavender, of course, because that is, that's a go-to oil. So I made a special diffuser bracelet. I thought it was really pretty with the lavender with some lava beads on that. And then Molly added. Yeah. And then I have a skein, what I was talking about earlier. This is one of my whimsy skeins. So this is one of a kind colorway. It will never be dyed again. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a special one. This is on the cashmere base. So 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon. And then uh, my mom and I chose the Progress Keepers together. This is a really pretty one that has um, a flower on it. And then it says Grow on the back. Mm -hmm. And they have special holiday scents. This is Christmas Spirit, and it smells really good. I'm not going to open it because it's a giveaway. I, I have that one. I have that one here. Exactly. That would be and horrible. And what, well, what, what are you going to do? Smell it? Exactly. I don't think that would work. <laughs> But it smells really nice and Christmassy. It does have a citrus smell though. There's orange in there. It's very nice. It There's just... orange and mm. nutmeg, right? Let's... I love this fall scent. Let's see what the. And then I made this diffuser bracelet that goes with that. It has some should cute little design. beads on there and some nice lava beads. So that's the yeah. diffuser bracelet that goes with that. Yeah, that one's quite colorful and pretty. You know, I've been in the Christmas mood lately, and I've been trying not to watch Christmas movies, listen to Christmas music, because I kind of want to <laughs> save it. So I kind of did something a little bit sneaky, and I diffused Christmas spirit. Um, this has orange, which is the citrus note, cinnamon, and black spruce, and that's it. And it smells, it, smells it does, it smells really, really nice. I mm -hmm. um, have diffused it twice, actually. The first time, I just had it on its own, and the second time I put a little drop of clove in there mm -hmm. because I love, love, love clove. Mm -hmm. It's a, a mood lifter, definitely. And the yarn is yeah. beautiful. This is a <laughs> skein that my mom actually named last year, mm -hmm. and we were having lunch one afternoon at a Vietnamese place, and we were talking about skeins of yarn, and I told her that I had this Christmassy colored skein of yarn, and I told her what it looked like, and she said, how about jingleberry? <laughs> and I was like, genius. So here is a, a skein of jingleberry. This is on plump merino, which is 80% superwash merino and 20% um, nylon. And then my mom and I chose this really pretty bronze charm that has a wreath on it with a pretty little winter green well it's a little bit brighter but it matches the skein uh really really pretty green um bead on it very holiday-ish yeah
the lavender will give away today and you guys will have a week to enter that okay. so next Tuesday um, we'll announce the winners via Instagram we'll probably do an Instagram story together mm -hmm. and um, announce it via both of our Instagrams so um, I will link to my mom's Instagram on mine and you guys can go sign up mm, that will be fun via there yeah so pretty quickly after I get home from Rhinebeck we will both be giving away uh, the yarn the charm the Christmas spirit and the diffuser bracelet my mom and I will probably be filming another video that is purely about essential oils because I think a lot of you have a lot of questions that you would like answered and maybe just a little bit more knowledge that you want. We didn't want to put too much into this right, because, podcast mm -hmm. because this is a knitting podcast and we know that a lot of you are interested but um, we don't know the extent of how long you want to listen to about essential right. oils. So we will be doing an an entire video just well, answering go, questions. Sure, I can go more into depth in much more information on essential oils. Definitely. But it still will be how long? It won't. Yeah, probably an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. We could do 12 if you would like. <laughs> 12 <laughs> hours? A live stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how are you using them all day long? <laughs> like, I just have a live video. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious mm -hmm. but yeah so um, write your questions underneath mm -hmm. and we will kind of make a little list and have a fun video probably in a week's time around the time when we announce the giveaway winner mm -hmm. um, so yeah it was a lot of fun to chat with you guys today it was fun to have my mom on the show thanks and for tuning in yeah we will see you soon 